stop creating boring face cams and create face cams like this. Today we're gonna create the famous Ali Abdel face cam border, which I really love and I also inspired my face cam uh, by Ali Abdel's face cam border. And to do this, we're gonna start off in Premiere Pro. You might ask why Premiere Pro? Well, we're gonna create a face cam first and I'm gonna show you a secret how to actually create beautiful face cams in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna use the crop effect to first crop the video like we want, something like this. Then we're gonna go to the roughen edges and this is my secret technique. I'm gonna change a couple settings. So I'm gonna change it to cut. I'm gonna change the border to quite high and then we're gonna change the fractal influence to zero. And as you can see, it will get rounded. And that's exactly the effect that we want. Maybe I'll decrease the border a bit to something like this. And I'm quite happy with this. I'm gonna scale it down, change the position to a position where you want. In our example, we're gonna put it to the right. Then you need to export this frame and you do this by clicking here to export frame, but you can also do uh, Command E or Control E on Windows. Save it as a PNG so it's transparent. Face cam base. And by the way, you only need to do this once after you created this border, you can reuse it in all your projects that you ever want. So I'm going to save this and press OK. Now for now, we can leave Premiere Pro and go to After Effects. We'll create a new composition, 4K, 25 frames per second. Now for the duration, you have two options. One, you can loop it. So make sure that the beginning and the end is the same and you make it 20 seconds or something like that. Or you create a version that's really long. And what's nice about this is that you can create a standard in animation, for example, that it pops in, something like that. For now, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna just use the loop feature. So I'm gonna change it to, for example, one minute. I don't want to make it too long. So I have a comp that's one minute. We'll import the face cam base. And by the way, if you just want to experiment with this yourself, you can download this asset in the description down below by joining our Slack group. For now, I'll import the face cam base and I'm gonna just drag it over. Now, if we look at this face cam, we see a couple things. First of all, we see a sort of glow effect. We see a line that animates a shadow and that's about it. So let's first make the line around the border, uh, the shadow, and then we'll animate the line as the last part. Back to our composition. We'll grab the rectangle tool and we'll grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'll just drag this over and we'll change the roundness and I'm gonna change the size. Change the position. Just make sure it's the exact same size as our face cam. I changed the transparency too by pressing T and you can change the opacity a bit to your liking. Now the rounding won't be exactly the same. That's also because the effect that we use, but this won't be an issue if we use a stroke that's a bit thick. I'll try to keep it thin, but you don't have to. First, we're gonna change the fill to none. We're gonna add a stroke. We're gonna change it to blue, but really light blue, something like this. Then the stroke needs to be thinner, but making sure that it does cover our image. Change transparency again, and I'm gonna put the transparency grid on. This is our first step. I'm gonna add a glow to this. So we go to effects, glow, glow, and we can change the color A to a bluish color, glow colors, A and B colors, glow radius bigger. And to see what we're doing, I'm gonna create a layer new solid. I'm gonna make it white, okay? And I'll put it beneath this so we can see a bit uh, on our layers and check how we're doing with things. You can also change the threshold uh, also change the radius, uh, whatever you want, or the intensity, uh, if you like to have it more dark. This also automatically creates our shadow because the glow has a black color. But to make this effect even more like the video, uh, we can even change the color B also to blue, play a bit with our values, glow radius. I now have an 11 glow intensity in 1.3. And we'll just add a drop shadow to this by right clicking on the layer, layer styles, drop shadow, open the drop shadow, distance zero, size a bit bigger. Something like this I'm really happy with. Now for the line animation, we're gonna use this secret effect that I think no one uses and that's the Vegas effect. We just put this on the shape layer, then make sure that this is above the glow. For now, I'm gonna change the color to red so we can really see the effect. And I'm also gonna turn off the mask and shape path so we can also just see what's happening over here. I'll change the width so you can really see the effect. 
Now, this is not the effect that we want. We're gonna change the length and the segment first. So um, I'll put these segments to one um, and the length, uh, I think should be maybe around maybe 50 or something or 0 0.5. And as you can see, you have a line that basically fades out at the end. I'm gonna change the width, just making sure that it's a bit bigger than our normal layer. And I'm gonna change the color to white maybe change the width to 4.7 or 3.7. Now for the rotation, which is basically animation, I will just press the keyframe button. We'll go over to the last keyframe and we're gonna change the rotation to maybe five. I think it goes a bit too slow and it goes the wrong way. So <laughs> we uh, go to the end and we'll change it to minus 10. Can even go a bit quicker, minus 20 change the width to maybe 2.5 and this is perfect. Now maybe even change our stroke to three and then I'm gonna just play it back and this is exactly what we want. Now, of course you're asking maybe what to do after this. How do I get this into my editing program? Well, that's really easy. We're just gonna turn off the face cam base. We're gonna turn off the white solid. So you just have this layer and you just have a background and this is fully transparent. You can just export this, uh, this movie as a transparent movie. And I always prefer to do it in the media encoder. So add to Adobe media encoder. It always takes a while for media encoder to start. And then you can just export it as QuickTime, Apple ProRes 4 for 4 with Alpha. Now throw it over the video that we created earlier and then you'll get something like this. Don't forget to subscribe to see more of these videos. Also, definitely let me know if you want to see a specific effect down below in the comments. And then again, thanks for all the positive feedback from the last video. And then I'll see you next time. Bye.